Hey, it's Kai here at the Outbreak Lab. I want to take this moment to tell you about some of the key features of Galago, some design decisions that were made that led to its uh, current form, and I want to cover a couple topics like the general anatomy, the debugger, and the power supply. Let's get started. So here we are on my engineering notepad, and here's a uh, block diagram I've drawn up of the Galago. But in order to understand what the Galago is, let's quickly take a look at what it isn't. So here's a crude, uh, simplified block diagram of the Arduino. And you can actually see that there's a USB connector, which is present on the Arduino board, connecting to a USB to serial chip. Now this chip in turn connects over a serial interface to the AVR chip that is the heart of the Arduino. It's the chip you actually program when you're developing for it. So in newer versions like the Arduino Leonardo, the USB connector um, goes directly to the AVR chip because it implements the uh, USB and serial functions. So this chip here is unnecessary. It simplifies the design, makes more things possible, and reduces cost. So this is actually a major distinction between the two. Um, on the Arduino board, they use a chip that converts USB on the side that connects to your computer to serial that communicates with the AVR, which is the main chip on the Arduino. On the uh, Arduino Leonardo, the new version, or on the Teensy, uh, it really does the same thing, except they put those same serial capabilities into the main chip that you're coding, rather than uh, another chip that's on the same board, mainly to save costs and to enable other features. Now, we did things differently. So we have a dedicated debugger chip on our board, and the USB connection that you make to the top of the Galago connects to that. On the other side of that debugger chip, as you'll see in the anatomy diagram, it connects to the ARM core. So this enables us to do way better things, such as flashing the code to the board, obviously, communicating upstream from the board and downstream uh, from your PC when it's connected, and most importantly, the, the debug feature. And that's the reason that we went to these lengths to engineer this. So let's come back to the Galago for a moment. On the Galago, we chose instead to connect USB to a dedicated debugger chip. And the debugger chip communicates with the ARM and does uh, only one thing, which is debug it. But because we can debug it, we can also load new programs onto there when you write them. We can load code onto the ARM. And we can also establish a communications path between the ARM and the host, the computer that you do your development on, uh, and back again. So the I.O. pins that you see on the Galago, which are uh, these ones along the side, they're labeled, and they're what you interact with in the code. It's what you wire up to your various sensors, controllers, motors, what have you. Uh, those are, of course, connected to the ARM chip. They're not connected to the debugger. It only does one job and it's on the underside of the board, you don't deal with it directly. So they're connected to the arm, and the crystal that you see on the top of the uh, Galago, this small one here, is a 12 megahertz crystal also connected to the arm chip. The power supply that I mentioned earlier is something that is powered by USB when it's connected, it's powered by VIN when it's connected, and it makes the debugger operate, it connects to the arm, and it also supplies outbound power on the 3.3 volt pin, which is right there next to VIN. So this is the reason why we recommend using VIN as a universal input rather than 3.3 volts. Uh, this is a very efficient and very flexible power supply that correctly chooses whether to select USB power only if VIN is detached, or it uses VIN if there's anything connected to it, which is really smart and really flexible. So that was a brief overview of what's in Galago, its major components, anatomy, how it connects together. It's stuff that I'll be covering in more detail in later videos, and if you want, you can always take a look at the schematic and design files available at Outbreak.co. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.